thought or guide, unless I already made this intro. In which case, I hope you enjoyed this mid-level Zolra guide. Um, basically, stats are easy. Gear's pretty cheap. You can make a couple of changes to the gear that I had. But it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's not too much to worry about. I would say for new players, so say you can't afford a blowpipe and arams and carls, I would go with a magic shortbow and rune arrows or whatever the best arrows you can use are because the blowpipe really doesn't seem to make a world of difference um i would think an upgrade from mystic to arams or dragonhide to carls is going to save you in the long run from learning uh getting through those mistakes and that sort of thing but you can really do it with levels similar to these you're going to be using magic most of the time and that's my lower skill out of the two so 75 to 80 seems to be the threshold that you're going to want to get over to start doing this boss. I mean, if you're more advanced at PVM, um, unlike me, then maybe even a little lower, but I would recommend definitely using a trident. So definitely having 75 magic is going to help you a lot for that. People do it with an Ivan staff. I didn't try to do that in this video, but you can. So quite the mid-level. So I'm 104 combat, which is... Not very impressive given these stats. These are pretty low uh, requirements. 84 range, 80 magic. 87 hit points is a little on the higher end, I suppose. But I'm going to be doing this also in some pretty cheap gear. But you can make some uh, substitutions for upgrades too. Like, you don't need Arams. You can do this with Mystic. That's totally fine. You can do that with Dehyde. Uh, you can really shave like 2 or 3 mil off of that cost. We'll say it's a 10 mil gear setup. And... My kill count is, I think, 38. I just kind of started learning it. I'm just kind of getting the hang of it. And uh, I think I can give some good tips for it because a lot of the guides out there seem to be pretty high-level guides. And uh, they don't go that in-depth. And the ones that do go very in-depth get pretty scary and overwhelming pretty quick. It was kind of tough to learn by a guide. So, as you can see, I don't have Barrow's Gloves. Um, I don't have a Ring of Suffering. Don't have Eternal Boots, Maldiction Ward... Uh, don't even have an imbued god cape. So this is a very bare bones style that we got here. But yeah, this is how I set up my inventory. This is the mage setup. And these are the switches. I just bring four. I always bring an extra recoil just in case. And I'm using uh, the rune light client, by the way. So I always have an angler fish. And this is how I set it up every single time. Like this is the order of the food, um, the potions, the doses of anti-venom. So yeah, we're just gonna... We're just going to get right to it. <clears throat> First, just to check my uh, high scores. So if you're wondering how I made um, enough of the bank to get this set up in the first place, you can see that I have 200 Barrows chests open. And I mean, if you do even like uh, just 100 of them, which takes about two days, two and a half days, I'd say if you're kind of grinding it out, then you can easily get a setup like this. So, let's run over here. Ooh, actually, real quick, run back. This is pretty important, too. If you are using the RuneLite client, you can add bank tabs. So, I have all my tabs up here, and then I've got my Zolra tab. And this has all the gear that I might use in it. I used to use a Serpentine Helm. Um, if you're learning it for the first time, you might want one, but once you get a couple kills under your belt, Switching over to Anti-Venoms is a lot, a lot cheaper. And you can use that 5 mil that the Serp Helm costs and invest that elsewhere. And that will upgrade your gear significantly. So, let's just teleport there. Total cost of supplies. Kind of interesting to see. So, every run, you're going to be going through about... 60k if you eat all that food but once you kind of get the hang of it you won't be eating all that food okay so uh if you don't know your barrows if you die at Zolro, does not degrade down to zero so there's really nothing to worry about and you can collect it for free from this nice lady but something to note that is important is if you have a brand new barrows item so say these weren't degraded a little bit or especially if this wasn't degraded a little bit and you die, then that will fully 
degrade and be down to zero. So, anytime you repair your barrel's items, just make sure you attack something with them on so they degrade a little bit so you don't die instantly and have to repair that. Because the first time I died at Zora, uh, that happened. And I was kind of sad. But, uh, yeah. So, here's how I do it. We're going to minimize that. Bring it back over. And we're going to pull up this bad boy. Stretch that back out. So this is the rotation guide that you can find on the wiki. It's, uh, what is it? So yeah, if you just look up OSRS wiki Zelra patterns, it'll pop right up. And I always have it just like that, so it's kind of flush with the RuneScape screen. And then getting right into it, you're just going to basically keep track of what the second phase is. So it's always going to start on range. So when you get in there, you're always going to start on the same tile where you stand. And you're always going to pray range and magic. You don't actually have to pray range, but if you're learning it and you're panicking, you might as well. Just because green Zelra means range, blue means magic, red means melee, but you almost never have to pray melee. Um, that's kind of a time where you can save your prayer points. And a quick tip is anytime it's on range or anytime it's on magic, when Zelra dips back down into the swamp, just switch your prayer to the next one. There's only a few instances, like on rotation three and rotation four, where it's going to be back-to-back -back range. So once it dips down, you can basically just confidently switch your prayer and then you're good. And the reason I bring the angler fish is it's just a little bit of a buffer um, on the HP. It's better than a Ceridome and Brew, in my opinion. It's going to save you some money. And another thing you always want to do before you get into the instance arena is check the charges on your Ring of Recoil. Because you don't want it to be at like one charge and then it shatters immediately. And then your second one either could run out or you could just take a lot of extra snakeling damage. I'm not the best at going through and taking no damage, but uh, that can save you a lot of food and a lot of teleports out. Also, just uh, don't be afraid to die at Zelra, because like I said, getting your gear on the current death mechanics is free, and I think once they change in a month or so, it's still going to be fairly cheap. So if you're going to go down, I mean, just go down swinging, because the only way you're going to learn is time fighting the boss. But learning the rotations only took me about a day before I was getting kills. Like I said, I only have 38. So I really am uh, just over the learning curve. And I still might die making this guide. We'll see. I'm not I'm not the best, but that's the whole point, is you want to learn from someone who's not the best so you can kind of see what you're going to be like when you're going in there. So let's eat that. And we pot up out here, so we're going to drink that. We're going to drink that. And we're going to click the big scary boat. Yes, I want to go. And then you can see that I have these tile markers, so I'm always going to be clicking over there, and I right-click Zelra, so when the camera changes, I'm good. Face your camera south, and zoom out a little bit. And now you're just going to be watching Zelra, and uh, trying to figure out what phase this bad boy is going to be on first. So, he dips down, and this is where we learn. So, it's range. Oop, go back. See? Such a noob. Gotta drink that now. So, it's going to be on rotation 3. That's how we know that which means melee phase is going to be next. So we're going to be running to this tile here, according to the wiki guide. There's the next one. And then since the one before this was range, we know just instinctually that the next one is going to be magic, and it turns out it's going to be over here on the right side. So this is going to be dipping down here. I'm just going to eat a shark. I just already have my prayers switched, uh, just because it goes a long way. Do the four-way switch, get over this guy, start attacking him. And uh, yeah, we're working it. Next one's range, right in the center. We're on this one right here, over on the right side. Next phase is going to be magic. It's going to be appearing over here. Here it comes. Turn the camera a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, when you see the magic thing shoot out a green one like that, you know it's going to be a range hit. I'm going to run back over here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So we're on this phase right here, which means the next one is also going to be range. Then we're going to have to run over here, and it's going to be a magic phase. So the next one, again, range right here. If you feel like it you can check that we got 15 more points of damage before that goes south and the next phase is going to be jad so since it's phase three or four it's going to start on magic and then once it shoots its venom i would just gear switch a little early if you're learning it because you're going to want to be on this anyway so it's going to be magic first Right before the thing hits you, you want to switch your prayer. You don't want to do it right when it hits you. Um, that's an easy way to mistime it. I have pretty bad internet, so it was kind of figuring out the timing, and a lot of my deaths happened on the jab phase, but it's really just back and forth and back and forth. Now, run down here. It's still on magic. Switch to the range setup. Next one, so we're on this last one here. So this should be a range phase. And we have started over. Um, no matter what, you're going to be standing right here after the jad phase. So whether you're fighting it over here, if it's an early rotation, one or two, or three or four, you're always going to be coming back to this tile. So this is the start of a second rotation um, after the jad phase when this ranger pops up. That's the start of a new one. So now we can see again that we are on rotation three. So we're going to be going down like this, which means the next phase should be a melee. But you should keep in mind that when the rotations start, um, there is a chance that there will be a random rotation mixed in there. So you kind of got to keep an eye out for that. So we just got 15 more HP. Next phase is going to be magic if we can't kill it in time. And we couldn't, so go over here, switch back to the range gear. Almost died, take it easy, and we got it. How about that? Okay, nice little 100k loot, and a four minute, 11 second kill time. Not that bad. Uh, my best is 229. That was actually, when I was just learning it, that was my third kill. And Zelra actually smacked me. And I died. Right as Zelra died. So, my personal best, I actually didn't even get the loot from. I just went back to the grave. I use teleports to house. You can, if you don't have um, a good house, I have 65 construction. You can just use a ring of dueling in place of that. And then you can run to the, um, the clan wars gate. And then that's a pretty easy way to reset all your stats if you don't have like a restoration pool or anything. I use my house because it's a shorter walk. And uh, yeah, so that was the first fight. We're going to be doing a couple more. Let's see here. Do I have any? Yes. Okay. And no more anti-venom. So I'm just going to put the loot in. Set this back up. Just like before. Always have um, your mage gear on because it's going to save you this inventory space and that's where the anglerfish goes. And since you eat that before, um, it's going to be where your shield ends up or your book or whatever you're using in this slot. It's going to be right there so it keeps all your switches nice and clean. And every time you bank, check that. So we have two more points of damage here. So I'm just going to break it because... Two points of damage. Rings of Recoil are like 800 coins. So if it's under 10, I usually just break it and I go in and I get another one. So setting up the inventory in the exact same way. Four sharks. Four of those so we can combo eat if we need to. And then the rest, you just fill it out. Um, I'm 51 HP right now, so I'm going to put a couple of these in there. And eat up to just about full. I'm not a huge stickler on it, um, I'm just going to go in there. 
a little lower because this is going to bring me over my hit points anyway. So we're going back. See if we can get a different rotation. So again, eat your angler fish, boost your hit points up, drink your potions here. Hit the scary boat. And get right into it. Run over to this tile. Right click on Zolra so you just have it right there. Open up your prayer tab. Switch your map to self. Zoom out a little bit. And wait to see what rotation it's going to be on. And again, you know right away by the second phase. So oh, this is going to be, again, one or two. If the melee comes second after the first phase, you know the Jad phase. You should start by praying range. And every time after these one or two phases, you have to switch to magic prayer. Because this will always be magic after melee. Next area will be run on phase one and two. Ooh, getting smacked here. It's always going to be just to the northwest of this pillar. You don't want to stand here. I have that tile marked, but you want to stand on this tile. If you stand here, then you will be in the venom. So, just something to remember. So we're on rotation one. The next thing is gonna be melee. We don't have to prayer right now. Here comes this melee guy. Next one is going to be a magic one. This is rotation one again, we're over here. The magic one is going to stand right here. We're going to stand anywhere up top. And when this happens, if you use a blowpipe, feel free to use your special attacks. Uh, it goes a long way. Kind of getting smacked right now. I'm supposed to be running over here. Just south of this pillar. Gonna eat a shark. Gonna drink that. And we're running back over here. And this is gonna be a Jad phase coming up going to start on range because it was rotation one or rotation two right before it hits us we switch 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 and now run over here the jet phase is done there's always going to be venom looping around here gonna eat up real quick and it's melee he's gonna dip down and it's the start of a new rotation again keep an eye on this too you want to make sure you don't run out of anti-venom it's just kind of all about not taking extra damage because the mage phase is always gonna hit you with random range hits and it can hit uh, pretty hard, so you want to be careful about that. So this is going to dip down, and it's going to tell us what rotation we're on. Again, it's melee second, so we're on one or two. Which means next is going to be magic right in the center. So we can switch to that, switch to that. And we're back in business. After magic, pretty much always range. So you don't have to wonder if you should stay on the magic prayer. Just switch it to range and run to the next spot. And we did it. Good job. How about that? Death runes. Those are nice for the trident. Okay. Going back. Back at the house. Just kind of recharging. Switch to the magic gear. 
and check this to see how we're doing. Nine more points of damage. I'm okay with that. Um, I'm not going to break it. I'm just going to keep it. But I know since it's under 10, or since it's really under like 25, I'm going to have to switch my ring of recoil. So I have to watch my chat bar down low. Since I use rune light, it lets me know in a purple text that my ring of recoil was shattered when it gets shattered. And that is very helpful. I'm just going to take these, combine them. So anglerfish, four sharks, a couple of combo eats, and we are good to get back. Ooh, another tip. Um, if you have 71 or 76 agility, you can, if you have 71 or higher, you can summer pie to take this shortcut, Ferrier encode BJS, and then that will save you the cost of a teleport. And the teleports are fairly pricey. So if you have that, every time you get the teleports as a drop, you'll actually be able to sell them and you'll make more money. And despite being able to sell them and make more money that way, you'll also be saving the cost of 15,000 every single time you run to Zelra. So if you want to grind that out, grind that out. Personally, um, that's a long ways away for me and I don't quite feel like doing it. So anglerfish, get the HP up, use these potions. That poor guy. Take the scary boat, go to the shrine, switch to your prayer tab, and run over to this northeast tile, like always. Right click Zelra so you have it ready when the camera changes. Face your camera self, and wait to see what the second phase is so you can tell what rotation you're going to be on. Let's hope it's three or four this time. Down it goes, and it's still one or two. When you're attacking the melee one, um, right before the second one hits, always go to there and you can sneak an extra hit in. And then, as always, pray for magic when the melee one goes down. After this phase one and two magic phase, you're always going to run over here. Just south of this tile. I did not need to combo eat there, but whatever. This is rotation one because this guy's up top. So next phase is gonna be melee right here. So we don't have to pray that anymore. There he is. You won't take any damage if you stand right here from the melee. Next phase is gonna be magic right here in this area. And we're gonna be standing anywhere up top to avoid the venom. Down he goes, which means over we go. My ring of recoil shattered. You can see the purple text. So we put on the new one. And use our special attacks. Here's a range phase. And we want to be going over here to avoid the venom. We're not going to avoid these two, but that's okay. Standing just next to this pillar. And the next phase is going to be magic. And we're running back over here. And then this next one is going to be the Jad phase. So we're going to put our mage gear on. And since it was one or two, we start on range and switch and switch and switch and switch. Before you go into the Jad phase, um, I would always just take a dose of a prayer potion, make sure your HP is kind of full, that way you won't get smacked. And then right when Zilra launches its Venom, you can kind of sneak in an extra couple hits, uh, just because it's a good time to, but once these two launch, it's good to run back. So, up pops Zilra. And this is a new phase now. This is kind of a slower kill, so we're going to get quite into this second rotation, it seems like. 
unless we just keep hitting high, but it doesn't look like we will. Okay, so again, one or two seems to be popular today. You can sneak in, um, if you time it right, three magic hits onto this melee phase, but I have been consistently getting two because I'm not super focused on it. Kind of just focusing on talking while I'm doing it. Okay, so we're going to run over here because that mage phase on one or two always means you're going to stand on this tile on the next range phase. Our prayer is getting pretty low, but if we can do it without taking a prayer potion dose, that means we save 3k. That's pretty nice. Should be a melee phase right here. No. Okay, so it was random. So we're going to run over here. We do have to take that. I'm taking a lot of damage right here. Oh, maybe I'm not. Whoa. Run. Run. Look at that, I died. That was a jab phase, and it was random. Um, I didn't pick up on that, wasn't super focused. Like I said, when the phases restart, there is a chance it can be a random phase. I wasn't really looking to see if that was a jab phase or not. So, even when you get like 30 kills, 40 kills under your belt, you're still gonna die. Don't worry about it, it's free. Well, I guess it's not free, it's like 15k, right? Yeah, it's 15k in the cost of food. So take your teleport back, talk to this nice lady, and she'll give you your stuff back. Found out very quickly that I am human. Uh, when you die, your special attack is not gonna be restored. Your prayer points will be, and your hit points will be. But you always want to restore your special attack because it's just some extra damage and some free healing you're going to get if you're using a blowpipe. I kind of want to try it um, with a magic short bow because that's going to take a lot of the cost of gear off for lower level players. Do I have any? No. Okay, so we're going to be using a magic short bow and rune arrows. Oh boy. Now this gear is pretty cheap. Um, I don't have Mystic in my bank, so I'm just going to keep the Arums, but this is really only like a 5 mil setup. Probably 5.5. So, just so you can kind of see. Um, what I lost in supplies. If you die, you're going to be losing about 60k, but that's like half the price of an average kill so it's really nothing to worry about you will be getting it back um once you get to around 15 kills i would say you're gonna be good enough at the boss to where you're still gonna die um but you're probably gonna die once every three or four kills hopefully so you're gonna be well over the profit margin and then once you're at where i am like the 40 kill mark or so um you really shouldn't be dying too much um, if those random jad phases pop up, it's pretty unavoidable that you're going to get smacked pretty hard. Especially if you're streaming or trying to make a guide and talking to a camera like I am. Um, and just not paying full attention or watching Netflix or whatever. Because people say Zoro is a pretty AFK boss once you get the hang of it. And I thought that was not true. I did my first ever jad. Like actual jad. Got my first ever fire cape. Just before I learned Zoro. Like a week before. So I'm really new to bossing. You can really kind of get get the hang of it after uh, just about two days. Hey, free stuff. This is going to be pretty different. I haven't actually ever tried to do it with a magic short bow. So, it's going to be interesting to see how much harder it is and what my kill time is down here. And uh, like I said before, always check your ring of recoil. 14 more points of damage, which means around a minute into the fight, probably going to have to change it. A good rule of thumb for Ring of Recoil is every 10 charges lasts you about a minute. So if you kind of have that internal clock going um, and you know what your Ring of Recoil charges were going in, then you should know at what point in the fight you should be looking to change your Ring of Recoil. And uh, yeah, Anglerfish, take these potions. And Big Scary Boat, let's do it. 
Go over to this tile like always, right click Zora so you know what's up. Face your camera self to zoom out a little bit and wait to see what rotation it's going to be on. Hey, rotation three. Okay. Rotation three means the next phase is going to be melee, and we're going to stand right over here, drink an anti venom. I don't need my prayer right now because it's spawning snakelings and it's not going to attack me. Run over to this tile. Here's the melee. Start getting hits in. Next phase is going to be way over on this side. It's going to be magic. Rotate the camera a little bit just to kind of get ready. And down he goes, and we're switching gear. Probably didn't need to combo eat, but oh well. Next phase is going to be magic on the left, but we're going to stay standing right in the middle. And then the next two phases, this is what I love about Rotation 3, my ring of recoil shattered, put on the next one. Next two phases, I'm going to stand over here, and it's going to be range both times. This is one of the ones where it's back-to-back -back range, and then after that, it's going to be magic. So the next one is going to be range right here for Rotation 3, and then after that, we should be rotating over here. And just to kind of prepare for the Jad phase... I'm going to drink these. So the next phase will be Jad, and since it's rotation 3 or 4, we can confidently start with this magic prayer on. Once it starts spawning the snakelings, I would switch to your magic boosting prayer and get ready to switch to the mage gear. Down he goes. Here's the Jad phase. Tunnel visioning the Jad phase. Switch. 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 And easy peasy, folks. It's the most intimidating phase, but it's really just like an internal metronome. I mean, once you have the timing down, then you have the timing down. Some people say you shouldn't have your auto retaliate on, um, but I like to. Well, four range hits in a row. So that's one of the times where RNG... Oh, wait, this is a range phase. Don't listen to me. I'm such a noob. See? Anyone can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. All right. So next rotation is one or two. Don't need a prayer right now. And if we can get one more hit on this bad boy, which we can't. Dang. One more. There we go. Alright. That wasn't too bad. 338. So that's really not far off of what I was doing with the blowpipe. So I would say you really don't need a blowpipe. And with the accumulator, I only used 5 rune arrows. That's all I lost. And that's way cheaper than losing Zelra skills. So maybe I'll just sell the blowpipe. Who knows? Because if I sell it, and I can upgrade here. I can upgrade here. I can get a lot of nice upgrades. And that could increase my time more than the... Well, well, we're not getting that back. That's okay. That's a dose of a prayer potion. Whatever. But let's get back into it here. Eat that anglerfish. Drink them potions. Sacrifice ourselves. And run back to this tile. Right click Zora every time because the camera changes on you. Rotate self, zoom out a little bit, and look for phase two. Down he goes, up he comes. It's rotation one or two. 
So next is going to be magic, and we stay right here, and then after the magic, every time, we go to this tile. I don't even think I'm attacking it right now. Okay, well, I goofed. Sometimes you goof. It went three ranges in a row. That is pretty tough. But we got lucky, and it didn't hit us very hard. I'm out of prayer potions, so I really hope I kill this thing soon. We have eight left. Oh no. Is this a jab phase? This is a jab phase. I don't like that. I'm out of prayer. Oh no. Please kill it. Luckily, it's melee, which means we won't take damage standing right here. But we better hit it for a 15. Come on, one more. One more. Oh, no. Quick. Do a hit. Do a hit. No. No. Combo eat. Hit it. No. Oh, we did it. That's awesome. No, we didn't. Oh, shit. No, oh, we died. Okay, so if I had one more dose of prayer potion, I would have lived. But yeah, don't be afraid to die. Like, I ran out of food, and I ran out of prayer right there. But go down swinging, because you really never know if you're going to get that kill. And you might lose 60k, or you might make 5 mil if you get a sick drop. So, always, always, always go down swinging, because this nice lady picks up your stuff. What she say when you examine her? She offers sacrifices to Zelra on behalf of the tribe. It should say, she fearlessly gets your gear when you prove that you're a noob and die over and over. But, I think that's going to do it for this. I'm going to edit it. Ooh. Put it on YouTube. And let you know that even with some mid-level stats and a magic short bow, you can get Zolra done. And that you shouldn't be afraid to die. Because even though I died twice making this, I think I killed it three or four times. And we made money. Keep in mind that I definitely lost like 120k. So we'll see how much I made in the end, even though I died twice. Maybe? I don't think we got very lucky on these drops. Oh, we got death runes, that's right. But I'm going to hold on to those because I use them all the time. So why would you sell them? Hey, supplies to the bank. Oh, those were anti-venom too, because um, if you're going to be doing it a lot, buying the anti-venom with two doses is cheaper than four doses, and you're never going to use more than two doses. Even if you get a five-minute kill at Zulra, or a six-minute kill, you're only going to need two doses of anti-venom. So, selling these off. So that's how much we made in cash, and then we got like another 40k or so in death runes, and uh, yeah, I mean that's all she wrote. I would definitely recommend learning this boss, it'll take you a good day, but this rotation guide on the wiki is the one to use, so again if you're looking for that, old school runescape wiki is all our patterns, and look for an image that looks like this.